name's Mark Dorley. I am the director of the ethics program in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences here at Villanova. And I'm excited to be here. And I'm, I'm, I'm very excited that we have uh, this, this opportunity to engage with each other and want to welcome particular our guests uh, once again from China. So I'm going to introduce our speakers and, and um, the title of their talk. Then they'll do their thing, about 20 minutes each. And then we'll have about 20 minutes for conversation. OK? So first, Dr. Lan Ni, who's an associate professor at the Jack J. Valente School of Communication at the University of Houston. Uh, her, the title of her talk is Ethics and Stakeholder Engagement in Intercultural Settings. And then we'll hear from Dr. Duan Gang, chief editor of Social Sciences Weekly at the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences. The title of his talk is The Significance of Economic Philosophy Study in Contemporary China. And they're both going to deliver their talks in English, um, which uh, I'm looking forward to, especially the second talk. <laughs> to both of them, of course. But I feel like. OK. Thank you, everyone. I, I'm sorry I have to kind of sit standing in this kind of awkward position because I need to uh, monitor the uh, presentation. So I'm very happy to be here today uh, and talk to you about um, the ethics and stakeholder engagement in intercultural setting. And uh, um, thank you for coming on such a rainy and cold um, day. So, uh, I'm not sure why the format is a little off, but uh, hopefully that will be okay in the next few slides. So this is a program of uh, research on intercultural public relations um, done primarily in collaboration with Dr. Chi Wang here uh, at Villanova University. And, um, I just wanted to give you a big picture first. Uh, these are the three main questions that we have been interested in examining. The predictors of ethical communication in intercultural settings, the mechanism or how organizations use uh, ethical engagements with their uh, stakeholders across cultures. And then the final one is the outcomes of uh, such ethical stakeholder engagement. So. Um, we developed three main categories of research in different contexts and using different samples. And the first major category um, refers to the studies on students here in the United States because in the early stage of our career, students are usually easier to access. So um, we um, did two major projects on uh, both international students and domestic students uh, majoring in PR. So for the first study, which was funded by U of H uh, new faculty grant, uh, we were looking at how university is engaging ethically with their international students, because all of them are entering a brand new cultural environment. So uh, we wanted to look at how the university uh, used relationship management strategies in interacting with them, and how that influences the, uh, the anxiety and uncertainty level of those students, uh, which in turn um, hopefully impacted the organization public relationships. And I call that uh, OPR. So we were able to find some very interesting patterns here. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go over each of the links here. But the six relationship mo uh, management strategies on the left side um, were used heavily by universities when they were interacting with the students. And then all of that, well, most of them did contribute <coughs> to the four relationship outcomes. Um, and an interesting pattern here was that uh, we were able to find <coughs> both direct link from, for example, the access over there as a relationship management strategy and um, control mutuality. And it, um, not so much on trust, uh, but also, def uh, and, uh, yeah. Um, so the, the patterns kind of varied, but uh, uh, as a whole, the relationship was managed uh, <coughs> reasonably well, and the students were able to uh, reduce their anxiety and uncertainty, which were the mediator factors in the middle. Um, just to give uh, one example, access, the first one here, access means how, to what extent the university provides access to their students, uh, letting them know that whenever you have problems, you know how to reach us, like who are the person responsible for which uh, aspect of your uh, university life. Um, and then very quickly, the, the relationship outcomes include control mutuality, meaning to what extent do you feel that um, you have some voice 
in terms of decision making in the university. And trust obviously refers to uh, the extent to which you can rely on the university or, re uh, or uh, in terms of the, its dependability and competence and integrity. And then satisfaction and commitment, to what extent you are satisfied with the relationship and also to the extent, uh, the extent to which you are committed to the relationship. So in this particular study, students were considered as a uh, stakeholder group with which the organization needs to build relationships with them. The second one here uh, studied the, uh, the PR students and we considered them as the future PR practitioners. So we wanted to see what are some of the factors that may predict their use of ethical and other PR practices. So we uh, examined uh, three particular intercultural communication competence features including empathy, um, open-mindedness, <coughs> and flexibility. And we wanted to see um, to what extent these um, individual uh, level <coughs> factors influence their way, their choice or use of ethical PR, along with uh, a list of other uh, typical PR practices. So again, this is a very kind of um, brief summary of our findings. Uh, and again, I will only highlight some of the key findings here. Uh, if you look at empathy, which refers to the extent to which you can truly feel yourself on behalf of the other party. Uh, to what extent you can put yourself in the other party's shoes. That one has a pretty strong predictive power on all the four PR practices listed here. So uh, it, 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 uh, it predicts the use of, preferred use of symmetry, meaning to what extent, like if they are working as a PR practitioner, to what extent can they uh, really consider both the organizational interest and the public's interest. And then two way obviously, the extent to which they can use feedback, interaction with their stakeholders. And then uh, also we examined in particular ethical communication here. And uh, the um, connection between um, that particular ICC feature uh, was pretty strong. And then open-mindedness open -mindedness and flexibility um, had a lesser uh, effect, but they both also predicted um, some of the, the PR practices listed here. So um, then uh, the second stage of our study moved beyond the student population. We tried to expand our uh, research context to the real life, uh, if you will call that. And we were interested in particular uh, the industry, the mining industry in Peru and its relationship with the, uh, the community members there. Because given its natural resources in, in uh, this developing country of Peru, a lot of multinational companies are entering, um, but then some of the community members were not happy with their presence because they are taking advantage of the resources and they are also t exploiting the local labor. So there was always this like fight and opposition between the two parties. So we, uh, we examined two sides of the story. Uh, the practitioners, PR practitioners who are working on behalf of those multinational companies, as well as the, the community members <coughs> who are living in the region. <coughs> and consistently, we were able to find that ethical and symmetrical communication played a key role in how the, ethical, uh, how the stakeholders were engaged and how they perceived the, the relationships. So a little bit more detail about each of the studies here. Um, consistent with uh, <coughs> what we found in the PR students who are the future practitioners, we were also able to find that among the current practitioners, working in Peru who need to handle or interact with a variety of um, audiences in, in, in different cultural contexts, um, their ICC, their interna intercultural communication competence levels also to some extent predicted or influenced their choice or use of ethical engagement as reflected in symmetrical communication and two-way communication. And that use also in turn leads to some positive uh, OPR outcomes, <coughs> relationship outcomes. So this is a pretty kind of <laughs> extensive model, but the, the, the gist is kind of similar to what I introduced earlier. So the, the three intercultural competence uh, factors were the predictors um, of their use of symmetrical and two-way communication. And again, uncertainty and, uh, and anxiety played uh, some kind of mediator roles. And then also consistent with previous studies, although uh, again, showing some uh, varying themes, 
symmetrical communication contributed to the control mutuality and, and, and trust, which are the, the, the two key indicators of relationship management. And then, like I said, we don't want to just look at uh, one side of the story. We then uh, got a funding from the Page Center for Integrity and Public Communication. So we hired uh, some field workers who actually <coughs> went in um, the community in Peru and they helped us collect data uh, on the community members themselves. And in this particular study, we uh, looked at again how the ethical communication engagement influenced uh, relationship management and also another ongoing study uh, also looked at the impact on the conflict resolution as a result because we were very interested in looking at whether the opposition, the fight uh, from the community members will be able to, to be kind of um, managed well if the organizations are able to um, engage with the, the local community members. So again, if you look at the, the middle part here, symmetrical and ethical communication um, used together, we're able to predict, uh, again, the control mutuality directly and trust directly here and then some of the effect also was immediated by the management of uncertainty. So we are able to find some repeating patterns here uh, in different cultural contexts, and we uh, really wanted to use the implications of our findings to really um, educate or influence some policymakers in the organization that um, it's worthwhile engaging with your stakeholders in an eth ethical way not just on the moral level, but also in terms of the bottom line, in terms of like reducing the conflicts, reducing potential costs from litigation or regulations. So this is something that we have been very interested in doing. And moving on, uh, more recently, I have uh, been doing research on the cultural groups within the United States, especially immigrants or other uh, minority groups. So, and I also wanted to explore more from a health standpoint. The first one here um, is a study on the relationship and mental health of immigrants, and it was funded by our college. And um, we have just finished the first study on the Indian immigrants, and we used qualitative um, interviews to examine a multidimensional approach to acculturation of these immigrants. And we also let them share their per uh, personal stories and experiences in the communication stresses at different levels. Um, we are also conducting other ongoing studies on other Asian American and uh, Hispanic immigrants, and we hope to kind of consolidate the studies at some point. So again, just some highlights of the study. Uh, at the professional level, uh, these immigrants did feel a divide between their personal life and, per, uh, and professional life, meaning they were able to develop the basic kind of courteous kind of professional relationship with their colleagues, but because um, they were mostly valued for their technical expertise. Um, it's worth noting that uh, the sample that we picked in this particular study refers to the more kind of professional working immigrants from India who usually have like STEM related uh, degrees and, and work experiences. So they were only valued at the technical level. Their voices do uh, mean a lot when they were asked to contribute to the uh, technical problems to like how the organizations uh, are running, but then they lacked involvement in the managerial decisions. Like they, 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 they were facing some kind of grasp <coughs> at this point. So they, a lot of them kind of um, perceived a lack of full integration into their organizational setting. So as a result, of this and other additional <coughs> findings that we identified in the study, um, they reported a greater degree of acculturation in terms of behaviors and values um, in s I than in the identification, which were the three dimensions that we examined in um, acculturation. So again, we proposed some implications for policymakers at the community level and also at the organizational level. And we, uh, based on the data that we found, we suggest that the organizations need to um, engage with those immigrants at a more in-depth level, like not just treating them as like high-level technical, uh, technological labor, but try to involve them more in the more um, subtle aspect of op operational um, decisions. Thank you. So this, the second one on uh, immigrants uh, was funded by Urban Communication Foundation. 
and we looked at how the Asian American community organizations engage with their community members in the hope of enhancing their health awareness. Um, so I, again, I will try to briefly go over some of the findings here. We were able to identify an emerging typology of stakeholder engagement strategies based on two level, two dimensions. The first one is the degree of symmetry, um, whether it's purely stakeholder in, uh, focused or organization focused or like somewhere in the middle, trying to kind of combine the, the interests of both parties. And then in terms of the degree of involvement for uh, these stakeholders, the engagement can range from pure information giving to some level of involvement and consultation at different levels, like message level, program level, and community level, and all the way to more in-depth collaboration with those stakeholder uh, members by inviting them to serve on the board so that they can uh, participate more in the decision makings, and then eventually empowerment. Empowerment of the community members at the various individual health level and also political and civic engagement uh, level and uh, ultimately community empowerment as a whole. Um, I, I won't have time to go over the details because of the time constraint. And then our quantitative study in, uh, portion of this project also confirmed what we have discovered earlier, but also I wanted to point out the key role of trust here um, because it's the first time that we were able to connect the relationship outcomes with people's actual perceptions about problems as well as their communication behaviors here. So translating that to like an everyday language is if they feel more trust toward the community organizations that they have been interacting with, they are more likely to feel strongly involved with certain issues, like in my case it's the health, uh, cancer status. And then they are more likely to seek out information and try to share information among their community members. So they are truly empowered and um, uh, through, through such in-depth engagement. And then to sum everything up, I'm sorry, we were also trying, we're also working together on the uh, intercultural PR books. Um, we will cover all these very important topics and throughout um, ethics will be examined in, 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 in those two books. So going back to the big pictures, uh, big picture, three uh, questions, predictors, mechanism, and outcomes. Some key takeaway points, predictors, the ICC is a key predictor for both current and future PR practitioners. And then mechanism, it can take different forms of uh, stakeholder engagement, but the key is to take into account both organizational and public interest. And then these are some of the major outcomes that they, we have identified. And eventually in the future, we are trying to see if ethical communication and engagement with organizational members will actually have some influence on their uh, psychological and physical health. But that's the direction for future research. Thank you so much for your time.
sorry. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me to speak. My name is Duan Gang, and I come from the Shanghai Academy of Social Science. My topic today is the study of economic philosophy in China. And uh, I will touch on current situation as well as some key points. Part one, what is economic philosophy? With the development of Chinese society, the emphasis on the study of economic philosophy among scholars is becoming increasingly more popular. Economic philosophy is a discipline, discipline that makes philosophical reflection on economic affairs and economics. It aims at comprehensive study of essential issues, such as social existence and the development of human beings. Economic philosophy is not a new discipline or an interdiscipline of philosophy and economics. Yet, there were significant philosophical insights in the works of Adam Smith and other early economic ma masterminds. Economic philosophy is a theoretical basis of economics. Currently, there were different uh, opinions on the disciplinary nature of economic philosophy. While some propose it should focus on social economic systems, some believe it should study the development rule of economic theory and still others think it equates to political economics, whichever the focus. All opinions agree that philosophical thinking is the nature of economic philosophy. Part two, characteristics of economic philosophy. Economic philosophy has four striking characteristics. Firstly, the studies should pay attention to exploring ideological <laughs> sources of Marxism and interpreting its contemporary significance. In modern China, scholars should rethink such theories as a comprehensive development of people, economic and historical law, historical materialism, and the critics of the political economy. We should also emphasize the study of social evaluation of economic process and its consequences, such as the analysis of the contradictory relationship between the aims and the means of economic actions. <coughs> Importance also leads to be attached to the practices of the market economy and research done on such issues as economic values and the ethnic economy, economic efficiency and the social justice, company integrity and social responsibility, personal economic freedom and moral self-discipline. Secondly, Economic philosophy diagnoses and reflects some important issues of economic and social development. For instance, the relevance between functions of currency and human nature, capital and modernity, a new explanation of labor value theory, philosophical introspection of consumer society and consumerism, and the study of the social existence of the exchange value system. Thirdly, the study of economic philosophy adds importance to the study of macro institution design. The interaction of economics and philosophy is helpful for finding important broad source in China. For example, with the help of a philosophy economic study, Society can begin to answer such questions as what kinds of deep questions need to be solved? What kinds of obstacles 
need to be removed. What kind of ground target need to be set up? All this requires the integra integration of a metaphysical philosophy with philo physical economics. Firstly, economic philosophy lay emphasis, lays emphasis on how to explain modernity by posing such question as how modernity in China developed developed and how to use reference, reference of Western experience and lessons, both of which are, sig are significant theoretical questions that the academia need to answer. However, discussions about these topics are long a lot enough in China. That is to say, it's inadequate to explain how the spirit of modernity is embodied. There also need to be a discussion about the relation between modernity and the development of secular society. Part three. Important, area, important areas of research and trends in economic philosophy in China. Firstly, Constructing new critics of political economics with the, development, with the development of the market economy in China. It is necessary to advance institutional innovation in practice and provide spiritual strength of design. In modern China, political economics embodies both classical political economics in the West and that from the former USSR, which is heavily influenced by Stalin's thoughts. As China's reform enters a deep water zone, multiple interests appear to cause many deep contradictions and the different uncertainties of economic and social development surprisingly appear. In this case, we have to think what kind of thoughts can be used to guide the historical change in practice? What kind of economic philosophy series can be used to support the market institution innovation? What kind of Chinese academy and Chinese culture spirit can be used to promote the economic and the social development? To answer these questions, we need to construct a new political economics critics Secondly, we should focus on the new problem of economic philosophy in the age of big data. What we should pay attention to may focus on. First of all, when controlled by a data network, each person becomes a transparent or semi-transparent individual. It is especially important to rebuild the inherent consistency of in instrumental reason and value rational. Next, the worldwide social existence brings about the extremely complicated global social ideology. And the close relevance of the ideology makes individuals anxious and fearful of being completely monitored. In the age of big data, Using economic philosophy study to make proper policies is an important task, which would enable data to make full use of its positive functions and release human freedom as much as possible. Certainly, exploring ethical problems of internet finance, the internet principles of opening Equality, coordinating, sharing have penetrated into traditional financial business and exerted positive influence, influence on the change of financial models. Such tools as the internet make traditional finance more transparent, cooperative, and lower, less expensive. However, it causes some ethnic problems problem as well. For instance, security problem of internet finance. 
credit, cri credit crisis of internet finance, supervising problem of internet finance. The above is a brief introduction of the discipline of the economic philosophy in China, which needs further study in many aspects. Thank you. papers. We have plenty of time for questions, so the floor is open. <laughs> Dr. Li, I wanted to ask you about the study in Peru. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of sample, how were they interacting with both the companies and the local villagers? We had actually a, a PR practitioner who has her own PR agency, both here and in Peru, and she was the one who contacted some professional associations uh, of PR in Peru, and she helped us recruit the participants from the practitioners. And then for the second study, as I said, we were able to use some funding to hire the field worker, and that uh, team of field workers was also led by a PR practitioner in Edelman in, in Peru uh, area. So he, uh, I mean, I wasn't there and I don't really speak Spanish, um, but they translated, he, he, that person and uh, our RA translated the questionnaire into uh, Spanish and we did the back translation and everything and then they brought the, the questionnaire to um, the local villages. And um, I don't have the specific numbers with me, but uh, I think they used the, the uh, random like a walk uh, method. They just randomly like picked a, a couple of regions and they knocked on the doors of those villagers and then asked people to to, part uh, to participate. So, so uh, the, can I finish? Sure. The, you know, the, the path coefficients you were showing, you know, these coefficients do not apply to the Peruvian sample. So that they are based on your Houston study. What are, well, I in the figure that is attached to each study refers to the, the, the result in that particular study. So if you, s you are referring to the path coefficients uh, from the diagram or the figure attached to the Peru practitioner or community studies, those are the findings from those two particular studies. Right, right, right. Yeah, maybe your complete paper would enlighten us. Yeah, so sure. If, up, yeah. Your, uh, your argument about the Indians in Houston Oh, yeah, that's you talked about the glass ceiling, and you're making that argument in a time when you have four of the top 20. I was aware of that, yeah. And, and so how does that work? I mean, it, obviously, it seems that the bright ones, they are being promoted to run the company. That's absolutely true. Um, <coughs> our study was conducted just a little bit earlier than that period when we see all these uh, Indian, like the CEOs with Indian heritage in the technology companies. Um, I would say that that's changing, but then overall, <coughs> because we interviewed mostly like the middle level, um, like engineers and very few managers, and I, I still feel that they, according to what they were telling <coughs> us, like in the, through their personal stories, they still felt that somehow they were valued only on their technical side. They were not really valued as a whole person, and that's preventing them from fully That's a, that's a great point. And actually, I don't have the ideal answer yet because I think a lot of the educators are still exploring. But I think uh, to borrow from one of our, two of our studies here, if we are somehow able to assess their ICC levels, like flexibility, open-mindedness, and uh, cultural empathy, without, uh, with the empathy being the most critical factor, we should be able to develop some training programs on how you can uh, learn how to think on behalf of the other person rather than just focusing on your immediate interest. Um, and then also we uh, have some classes <coughs> or teaching in terms of conflict resolution because they are going to learn very quickly that if you are only speaking to your own positions, you're not going far. 
Um, so I, I, I don't have like an, an ultimate, answer, ultimate answer to that question, um, but I think this is a, a line of research or um, like educational F, uh, initiative that we would like to start and continue. comment along those lines, if I may. Okay. It's not a question. Um, I think you're very right. I think one of the concepts that's not discussed very much in public relations and in many other uh, allied fields is the notion of emotional intelligence. So we talk about flexibility, empathy, and so on. And that's precisely where I think a lot <coughs> of the Based on the comment, I had two questions, but one was how did you operationalize flexibility? We used uh, the latest uh, version of the multicultural personality questionnaire developed by um, <coughs> Van der Chi, can you help me out here? Because they are uh, long yeah, names. Van Dijon and Van Hansen is the two scholars who are in Canada. So um, yeah, we used their multi multinational, multicultural uh, personality questionnaire. Yeah. And it's an evaluation that经济哲学这门学科呢 and uh, this is the, the economic philosophy is not really new things and new subject for, for Chinese too. And uh, they established this uh, the, like a research institute. This is a national research center. Uh, this group is uh, uh, around uh, 50 to 60 and uh, uh, like uh, scholars or the experts. These researchers have published a lot of research and in many universities, Shanghai Chai Jin Dash, Dong Bei Jin Jin 
and uh, they are published a lot of uh, essays and uh, books, and also in a couple of uh, universities, they also open the master degree and courses for this uh, subject. 我是那个上海财大财经大学的这个第一第一名那个博士毕业，经济哲学，最最先最先那个毕业的，财经哎。He said, I was the first and the PhD in Shanghai and the finance and the economic university uh, for the philosophy. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, this is uh, this uh, Economic philosophy was born because the, the, they want to face the Chinese economic security issues, the key points. 就像我刚才也提到了，中国改革开放以来有很多这样一个现实问题，在经济，特别在经济领域，涉及到一些哲学的基本问题，急需我们去加以研究和探讨。Since the and the Chinese and the, the market the, is open up, we have a lot of issues here. So. We uh, we have this uh, economic philosophy. This subject discuss a lot of things and in Chinese, the present and the economics. 这门学科的这样一个成立，这样一个诞生呢，我想更多的是针对于我们以往在中国以往的经济学研究，更多的注重一个操作性和实用性，而不去关心更更宏观宏大的问题，比方说公平正义问题。Yeah, this economic and uh, the philosophy is focused on not small things only for, for, for example, the equality issues and, uh, and the justice issues. 包括一些哲学的, and the basic and the questions in, uh, about economic in philosophy. 我想随着中国改革开放的进一步的深入 经济哲学的作用将会，将会发挥更大的作用，有会有更多的学者加入这个研究团队。With the development of Chinese economics, I believe a more and scholar will join us and become the expert in economic philosophy. It's okay. Yeah, I say follow up to that, Doctor Zhuang. Is it fair then? to say that at this moment there is not a clearly defined economic philosophy, you know, Chinese economic philosophy seems, seems to be going on. It seems to be something evolving or something that uh, has not been clearly defined. Is that, is that a fair assumption to make? That there is, that at this moment there is not a clearly defined Chinese economic philosophy. <laughs> 确定的一个范围的，是是，现在是，我刚才也提到，对这个经济哲学的定义有不同的认识，但是呢，一个基本点，大家都认认同是基于哲哲哲学层面的思考，这这这一点大家是共识。My question is if the Chinese economy keeps developing very quickly, if Chinese culture and traditions will remain. Good question. 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 Good
，经济发展取得了很大的成就，经济总量第二了。嗯哼。You wanna do the translation or ideas? Okay. That after Chinese open up for three years, Chinese change a lot to the good direction economic. 在这样一个经济成就的这个背景下呢，我们越来越多的学者都认识到啊。我们在取得这么大的经济成就，其实是刚才我们方所长也提到，实实际上是付出了很大的代价，精神上的、道德伦理上的，这这个这个代价，我想，现在是时候好好的反省、思考的时候了。Yes, and we we now that we accomplished a lot economically, and during the process, we all also lost a lot of things. We realize this, especially for a lot of scholars. We we pay too much heavily for we lost the culture and uh, and moral morality and also the value of our life. Now this is hard for us to think about uh, deeply how to perfect this. 我不是政治家，也不是习总书记，但是我一个学者身份呢，可以谈谈自己的一些想法。I'm not a politician, but as a scholar, I want to talk a very personal. 中国取得这么大的经济成就，付出这么大的代价，我想这也是一个必然的这样一个过程。今天我们应该说是很幸运的认识到了，我们付出的代价。需要我们好好的反省一下，这样做值不值得 ？Now it's very lucky we still can have a time to reflect. We pay so much for for the economic. Is it worth it? And this is time I think we should reflect. 幸运的是呢，我们高层也意识到，我们的领导在不同场合也提到要重视我们的传统文化，传统文化里面的精华。在很多场合都提到传统文化的价值。Yes, and uh, the luckily and uh, even the in different uh, Chinese leaders, different level of Chinese, they realized, and uh, we should uh, keep our tradition and uh, especially the essence for Chinese culture and tradition. 中国传统传统文化里面有很多很有价值，当然不也不可否认也有很多糟粕的东西。刚才我们方方方首长也提到，我们的传统几千年传统的这个仁义礼智信这样一些核核心价值观，我们可以继承。同时，我们是一个以马克思主义为指导的这样一个国家，我们也会在这一点更加的坚持。当然，我们也不排除吸收世界。文明的优秀成果为我所用。Okay, and uh, and uh, we will and uh, really and keep on the good part of our cold tradition. And of course, we are rid of the not good part. And in one way, we will keep on our and tradition the good value. And about uh, we just mentioned about Confucianism, but uh, the values, integrity, and the wisdom, and uh, also righteousness. But in another way, we also insist on Marxism. Of course, we all like to observe all the good value and from a different culture and different country. 这里面就是有一个前提。我们坚持的这些优秀的传统、马克思主义的基本原则，以及西方适合中国发展的这样一个文明成果，我们坚持它，我们的前提必须得了解它是不是。适合中国发展的国情和现实。Yes, we with the question is here. We will insist to keep our good, excellent tradition and also Marxism, the idea, and also we will also we observe and accept a good value from a different culture and different countries. But the problem is, if it is fit to our country, if not fit to our country, and maybe that. 如何判断这个标准呢？我想，不仅仅是我们的政治领导人，我想
，也很更更重要的应该是我们这些学者是不是应该加大反反省的力度，促进促进这些优秀文明、传统价值为我所用，我们如何去做？这是这一点是非常重要的。If it is not fit to our end value, we have to reflect like that, and not just political leaders, especially for the scholars. How can we can accept and promote this excellent and culture value and also accept it to our our culture? Okay, we've got. Uh, we're going to have to end there. Thank you so much to both of you. Thanks very much.